Diary of Thomas Baxter, Butler, April 19th, 1901. The damned electricity is on the blink again. If it was up to me, the whole system would be scrapped. We never had this trouble with lanterns and candles. Parts of the house have been plunged into total darkness, which is completely unacceptable. I have set up candles in areas which are affected. Some parts of the mansion still have wall-mounted candlesticks, which has made my life a little easier. The Ripley family will soon be returning from their archaeological dig in Egypt. The house needs to have suitable lighting before they arrive.
orb is the most important artifact. It is the reason we are here, but it is also the thing that can cause our exile. It is powerful, yet very dangerous. If it falls into the wrong hands, our plans could be jeopardized. This is why the six pieces must stay hidden in different locations so no one can reassemble it. To be certain of its security, we have servants on hand. At first, I wasn't sure how useful they would be, but it turns out they do a very good job of sniffing out any would-be thieves.
God, I know the truth. I shouldn't have gone looking, but curiosity got the better of me. I've locked the door, but I can hear them searching. The grunts and the squeals send chills down my spine. It's only a matter of time until they find me. Edward, my darling, if you're reading this, and it is too late for me, but it might not be too late to save our son. Find Martin. Please, Edward, save our son and get yourselves to safety. They are banging on the door now. I don't have much time.
Diary of Thomas Baxter, April 27th, 1901. Lord Ripley isn't happy about the state of the house at all. This is supposed to be his luxury retirement home. Instead, he has to deal with regular blackouts and workmen constantly under his feet. And if this wasn't bad enough, we've had a number of break-ins recently. I've not caught anyone just yet, but I've seen the evidence. Windows broken, items gone missing, and I've heard whispers. Creaks and bangs at times when I knew I was the only one in the house. It's probably lowlifes from the local village. The filthy scumbags. They'll pay dearly when I finally catch them.
Diary of Thomas Baxter, May 2nd, 1901. Whilst renovations were taking place in the wine cellar, one of our workers accidentally knocked through a wall he shouldn't have. However, what we found behind left us all speechless. We discovered a vast storage area full of boxes, wine racks, and all manner of early 19th century items. For whatever reason, this area must have been spared when the old castle was demolished, presumably due to its structural integrity. Upon looking through all the fascinating items, I came across a box labeled Edwin Stanley. I gingerly opened the box, but I was shocked by what was inside. I found a mysterious spherical shaped artifact. Its texture was unlike anything I had touched before, and I swear I could feel a small vibration radiating from within. I have hidden the object for now. I will have a proper look at it when the workers have gone.
Diary of Thomas Baxter, July 18th, 1901. I have made a terrible mistake. I should never have touched that blasted artifact. I was examining it in the wine cellar when the room was suddenly filled with a brilliant blue light. I couldn't see anything at first, but I soon became aware that I was not alone in the room. When the light eventually faded, to my horror I was surrounded by a group of hideous creatures. I tried to run, but I was grabbed and thrown to the floor. One of the beasts hissed that I should do exactly as they said, or I would be slaughtered there and then. What choice did I have?
hard at work attempting to construct an obedient servant. We started by combining our own genes with those of a human. The results were horrific. We then turned to other mammals. The dogs available lacked intelligence, and the less said about the cattle experiments, the better. However, after visiting a local farm, we finally found the perfect specimen. Early test subjects showed very positive results. Although a select few behaved hysterically and wouldn't stop screaming, they appear to have gone insane due to the conversion process. Until the kinks have been ironed out, I will continue to patrol this area of the house myself. The artifact is incredibly precious, and I feel much happier watching over it personally. Diary of Thomas Baxter, July 18, 1901. Whilst trapped in the cellar with the beasts, they divulged information on the artifact, what they described as an orb, where they come from, and what they plan to do next. They were previously enslaved by the Earl of Brackenburg, who used them to kidnap people for him to experiment on. Trapped inside the orb's realm since the castle was demolished, they have grown to despise human beings and claim to have big plans for how to deal with us. Suddenly, one of the creatures grabbed the orb and smashed it into pieces, claiming it was too dangerous to keep fully assembled. I was then given a choice, become a loyal servant or die.
Diary of Thomas Baxter, December 9th, 1901. The creatures have been hiding in the shadows since I inadvertently released them, but today they made their presence known by carrying out a coordinated attack on everyone currently inside the mansion grounds. Once their terrible plan has been carried out, they instructed me to convert the basement storage area into a makeshift prison. I am to bring in new house guests and lock them up here until they can complete construction on what they describe as a proper dungeon. They truly are barbaric beasts. To my dismay, both Lord and Lady Ripley are now among the dead. They were good people. They did not deserve such a cruel fate. I hate these creatures with all my heart, but if I don't do exactly as I'm told, I'll soon be lying beside the Whipleys in the graveyard.
have finally finished construction work on our new dungeon and prison complex. The cages in the basement served their purpose, but were never meant as a permanent arrangement. Dedicated torture rooms are essential if we are to efficiently carry out our tasks. The butler is proving to be a great asset in acquiring specimens. Using the power of the orb, we are able to shapeshift to appear human, but it requires vast amounts of energy. Using him to bring in guests is a much preferred alternative to doing it ourselves. We just have to hope he continues to obey our orders.
Discovering the storage area from Brackenberg Castle was left intact, we immediately set to work converting it into a more suitable work area. It has given us a much needed space to carry out our experiments, whilst keeping our mansion guests from discovering what we are really doing. The conversion machinery is vast and very heavy. The old damp walls were rotten and falling apart, so we have reconstructed them and installed the necessary equipment. Now, we need to focus on creating as many obedient servants as we can.
Diary of Thomas Baxter, July 4th, 1903. I cannot do this anymore. I have begrudgingly served these creatures for far too long. The vile things I have done for them. I can no longer live with myself knowing what I have helped accomplish. If only I had the strength to defeat them. But I sit here, powerless. Well, I refuse to bow down to them anymore. I will no longer help them hurt people. I am going to enjoy this glass of wine, and then I am going to free every single prisoner I can. It doesn't matter if I make it, my life is forfeit now. But if I could just free one soul, one innocent soul, I will die knowing I did something right. Not only that, 
but he also sabotaged some of our machinery, which has put our slave building process on hold until it can be repaired. Humans are disgusting and untrustworthy. From now on, we will do things ourselves.
Diary of Thomas Baxter, 11th of August, 1903. I've been trapped down here for five weeks now, and every second has been agony. These beasts seem to gain a twisted pleasure from the torment they serve out, even though I know there is more to it than that. The creatures are actually feeding off of us. The torture process produces a rare substance they call Vite. The more pain they produce, the more Vite is produced. They depend on this substance to stay healthy. Their exile caused them to be in very poor health due to their Vite deficiency. I suppose when they decide to unleash their master plan, they will still need to keep a number of humans around to continue leeching the Vite. God, I really need to get out of here.
very happy with our rebuilt dungeons. We designed them after the old dungeons from Brackenberg, as we believed old stone walls and burning torches were much more fitting for this sort of environment. Keeping the prisoners on edge is essential, and this design goes some way to achieving that. Now we need to focus on collecting more specimens for the torture program. With the butler locked up, we are having great difficulty handling this task ourselves, as our human form is hard to hold for long periods of time. If we are to succeed with our master plan, we need to push on. Our swine army continues to grow. Soon, we will have enough pigs at our disposal to remove the human filth from this land for good. Your problem. Someone is sneaking around the mansion stealing the old fragments. There is only one piece left. If he recovers it, he will have the power to destroy us. Finding this person is top priority. All other tasks must be put on hold until he is captured. Several prisoners escaped from the dungeons recently. Two were recaptured, but one is still on the loose. He is obviously the thief we seek. In case we fail to apprehend the culprit, there is a special surprise waiting for him, should he attempt to gain entry to the inner sanctum.
have yet to be discovered when we previously inhabited this world. But now we have access to unprecedented technological advancements. Electricity, combined with the power of the orb, has resulted in our greatest creation yet. After months of failed experiments, we have finally succeeded in creating the ultimate warrior. This weapon, Specimen X, is stronger than any of our creations so far. It can stun or kill enemies with bolts of electricity. It can teleport itself by harnessing the orb's energy, and perhaps its most useful ability. It can wipe the minds of our prisoners. An army of these creatures would make us unstoppable. Unfortunately, all is not perfect. Specimen X is disobedient and volatile. It will indiscriminately attack humans, pig slaves, and even us. It is loose somewhere deep underground. Hopefully it will stay there while we perfect the next specimen.
it is poisoned. It is dying a slow death, and we are the cure. You must realize how disgraceful human beings are. They multiply, consume, and destroy everything in their path, even themselves. Violence, suffering, and death are as natural to a human as barking is to a dog. Cruelty is in your blood. We can fix this. Let us unleash our swine on the world. Let us cleanse the cancer from this dead, miserable planet. The future is in your hands now. Make the right decision. Edward, my love, I am so proud of you. You have done so much good today. Myself, your son, and all those other poor souls have finally been set free. I'm sorry I have to say goodbye now, but know that I will always love you. And so will your son. Take care of yourself.